I'd like to talk about the second wave of Tiki, otherwise known as the Tiki Revival. And I want to talk about Tiki News. Now, what this is, is this is actually a fanzine that Otto von Stromheide created back in like the early to mid 90s, which actually ran, I think, up until like the early 2000s. And back in that time, if you were into Tiki, this is the only thing that you're going to this is the only news you're going to get about Tiki's because there wasn't the, the book of Tiki from St. Kristen wasn't written yet. And it was really an underground thing. And the interesting thing about the second Tiki wave, as opposed to say the third wave of Tiki is that it wasn't, there was a revival of the, of Tiki, but it wasn't that big. And well, now it's huge, but the thing I noticed is as I was going through this, this fanzine, or I, well, I have several of them actually. This is one that actually um, shagged at the uh, cover for. And the thing that I noticed as I was going through this was the focus on the tiki's themselves, to the point where like they'd actually have like sections where like tiki spotting, where like, hey, check out this movie, because in this movie there happens to be a tiki in the background, and. I saw this documentary called Plastic Paradise, and it's a great documentary. It's actually on Venmio. Venmio, is that how you say it? And they interviewed Sven Kirsten, and what I found interesting is that he was going to, like, old hotel rooms and old motels looking for tiki's. So the focus of all of this, the focus to tiki, is the tiki's, and... Um, I like to say, my theory is, you know, there's always this question of like, what's tiki or is that not tiki? And my feeling is the only thing that's tiki are the tikis. And I want to start, I've been thinking about starting this series for some time and it's going to be called Tikis with Ray. And I swear to God, this is going to be my last series where it's going to be a with Ray kind of thing. But I think it's fitting and important to do a series focusing on the tiki's themselves because the artwork is incredible and it really is the heart of everything that we're into. I figure I'd start off with my tiki collection and I'll show you what I have and I'll tell you a little bit about how I got them and what they mean to me. But going forward, I want to reach out to other people that actually have tiki's in their tiki bars or they own them and show them off, get their stories. So this is going to be the first episode of Tiki's with Ray. So this is my Tiki bedroom. I call it Tiki with Ray's Tiki Hideaway. And as you can see, I have a couple Tiki's here. And I want to start off by talking about this little brown guy here in the middle. This was carved by my buddy Travis Bay, and that's how I met him. He actually had this for sale on Craigslist, and um, I went up to get it from him, and we ended up hitting it off. We ended up, like, talking and drinking Mai Tais for a couple hours, and it's like, Travis has become one of my good friends. I've had him on the show many times, and this is a carving. I think it's a Maori warrior, and um, the thing I love about it is the, um, if you look closely, you can actually see all the tattoos on his on his head and um it's not the biggest tiki but it's pretty it's pretty awesome travis carves when he can and um about a year or two after the fact he started talking about carving another tiki and it's actually this guy right here and um it's a marquesan or marquesan tiki and i remember he was carving it and i was thinking like oh man i'll i'll help you promote it when you're done we'll make a video about it and then we'll, maybe we'll say, hey, it's for sale, do you wanna buy it? And then I actually decided, you know what? I think I want it. So I actually, I actually went ahead and bought it. I bought it from him. So um, now I have two Travis, uh, Travis Bay Tiki's in my bedroom. This guy is a little, a little Big Joe. And um, the, the full size Big Joe is actually six feet tall, so Ken, Pleasant of Pleasant Tiki or Wicco Decor made he made these like miniature ones and um, this is only like a couple feet tall but it's really really cool and then he made a 
This is a, a Moai. Again, it's a little bit taller than the uh, Little Big Joe, but it's still pretty cool. This guy in the middle isn't a tiki at all. It's actually a horse, and that is a Rouse horse, and that's a, <laughs> that's a whole other story. So when I was up visiting Heather and Kim Pleasant, they were showing me around, and they were showing me all the old Wicco artifacts that they have. And actually, Ken was going to throw this guy away. He's like, yeah, I made it. I didn't really like how it turned out, so... I'm just going to throw it away. And I'm thinking like, dude, I'll, I'll buy this from you. <laughs> well, actually, he didn't, even, he, didn't even, he didn't sell it to me. He just gave it to me. So I took it home. I cleaned it up a little bit. And um, it's is it a tiki? I don't think so. I don't even know what it is. And I don't even think Ken knows what it is either. But still, I think it's pretty cool. And um, it's I, I sleep with it in my bedroom. Now, speaking of the Big Joe, I guess this would be like a mini Big Joe. It stands about four feet tall. And um, again, the, the, the true full-size one would be six feet. This was made by Ken Pleasant. And um, at this point in time, it's probably my favorite tiki. Um, again, the only tiki that I'm out looking for right now is I'd love to get a full-size Big Joe. But this will do for now. Thank you, Ken. Some tikis that I want to give honorable mention to is... Um, these right here, they're only about, they're only about a foot and a, a foot and a half tall, but these are all tiki's that were souvenirs that you would have bought it in Hawaii. Because the reality is, is as much as you probably like to have a big tiki, you're not going to fit a tiki that's like four feet and put it into your, your luggage. But these guys are small enough that you can, that you could put them in your luggage. Um, I think the one in the middle is from like the, the mid-century. I think the one that's on the left is probably from the 70s, maybe the 80s. And I think the one here on the right is maybe a little, even, a little bit newer than that. Um, my friend Lara gave me the one that's on the right, so thank you very much for that. And these are right above my, my bed. Okay, so these are not tiki's at all. These are actually... Um, well, the two on the left are called Funtouchables. They were made by Wicco. And the one on the right is actually a Nomi. Again, not a Tiki, but these were actually carvings that were made by Wicco back in the day. But um, Ken Pleasant made these for me. Because he actually said to me, he's like, he goes, if Wicco made it, I could, I could recreate it. And we were looking through a catalog. And I saw, the, uh, I saw these Funtouchable guys, and I'm like... Can you make me these? And um, the guy on the left is Ralph. And the guy in the middle is Ralph's brother. And the horse that you saw at the very beginning of this is Ralph's horse. And if you go into the catalog, it actually says Ralph's horse. The Nomi is actually a little a little guy. And um, Heather and Ken Pleasant actually have an original one. And um, I think this one's just as cool. So this is my Tiki collection that's in my bedroom. Um, and I love every one that I have. And this, to, these are the heart of what Tiki is all about. And the artwork and the time and effort it is to create these is, is unbelievable. And um, I'll tell you what, support your local Tiki artist. They'd appreciate it. So going forward, if there's anyone out there that has any Tikis in their Tiki bars, let me know. If I can make it to your house, I'll come and we'll we'll go through your collection so uh hit me up in the comments section below want to support the tiki with ray show and look cool doing it at the same time then head over to tikiwithray.com and buy yourself a tiki with ray shirt they're only twenty dollars Tony Canepa did the design and the screen print in America.